Have you ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes of God of War? For an average player, I feel like the answer is yes. And if it is, you've come to the right place. Like my previous video, we'll be covering off-screen behaviors of objects and characters that we're not meant to see, ranging from strange, funny, or just straight up terrifying scenes. If you're new to the channel, definitely check out my first video covering God of War. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of stuff. I'll be picking up right where I left off, so without any further delay, let's jump right back into it. So Kratos had just finished his fight with Baldur and his terrifying necromorph transformation. I had saw a comment asking if this was actually in the game, and the answer is yes, but only viewable with the right tools. But we already defeated this monstrous creature, so let's go ahead and move on. Our journey is met with various obstacles and enemies as we continue towards the mountain. I will say that I enjoyed going through these encounters Kratos and Atreus had as they lay out the undead one by one, but it isn't until we come across these human NPCs that we witness the next off-screen shenanigans. No. Kratos and Atreus are confronted by some desperate humans that have full intent to eat the two of them. You can clearly see that these guys have seen better days. It's a tense cutscene as they reveal themselves one by one. What we don't see though is that they have some really impressive hiding spots as this all takes place. One of them can be found on his knees and hands as he patiently waits to rise out of the ground. Definitely creeper status with this one. Another one can be seen doing the same thing except he's standing as he waits. They do eventually rise from the ground as the one jumps down from a ledge, which is seen during the cutscene. But once the camera pans to the right, the two of them begin to ice skate around the terrain, might I add, majestically. It's at this point that Kratos tells Atreus to get behind him, which he does, but it's what follows this that's interesting. Atreus not only gets behind him, but he clips through the wall for maximum safety. A few moments later, he shoots through the rubble, being placed on the far left side of this room. If we bring our attention back to the aggressors though, we can see that one of them is eagerly waiting to join the cutscene, but his sword is placed in a somewhat suggestive manner, which I found to be funny. There is then another one that is probably the only one that doesn't have a unique hiding place, as he just hides behind this pillar. After this cutscene ends, we of course neutralize these savages, but then a few undead show up that we also must take out. This is when another strange sequence of events takes place. As soon as we kill the last of the few undead, another human comes out of nowhere, tackling Kratos to the ground. It's during this that we can see Atreus has been jumped too, as he calls out for help. But if we rewind a little bit here, we can see that the guy that jumped Kratos does in fact come out of nowhere. He slides out of the wall in a horrific manner as he flanks Kratos. I notice this human will correct his path towards us though, which seems to be based on the position we are in as this scene starts. What's really wild about this whole sequence though, is that Atreus goes on a fun but confusing adventure in a very short amount of time. If we slow the game down, we can see that Atreus continues to show off his elusive skills by skating back behind Kratos and through a wall. We can then find him awkwardly waiting outside the area in which we came from. Eventually he makes a long trip outside the room, making for quite an unpredictable trip. As he enters back into the room he was originally in, he is placed underneath the human that jumps him, whom he does eventually stab in the throat. But if you think about this, the entire trip Atreus makes happens within seconds. It all takes place within the time Kratos is taken to the ground to when the camera pulls up to show us Atreus being attacked in the background, making for a very quick but interesting sequence. Moving forward though, I came across Atreus's knife having a mind of its own during this next cutscene, and it's quite the trip. After Atreus takes out his attacker, we run to his aid, initiating another cutscene. In this scene, Kratos removes the dead body off of Atreus. He attempts to comfort him as he's in shock with everything that just took place. It's during this part though that the knife floats out of the dead body and, well, as you can see, it goes on this unpredictable journey throughout the scene. It then sinks into our undead friend and through the ground too. Eventually the knife does come back up and settles right back where it started, making for a strange journey. 
It's after this cutscene though, that we end up taking care of a few Hellwalkers before moving forward. So as we progress forward, most players will know that we find ourselves meeting Brock for the first time shortly after this. Once we approach him, a cutscene takes place where he is having trouble with getting his caravan across the bridge. As Kratos and Atreus assist Brock by scaring away whatever was in the trees. Which, by the way, is nothing if we take a closer look. Once getting close enough to the trees, they unload, revealing no potential creatures lurking about. This makes sense though, seeing as it would be a waste of resource. Anyways, while Brock is telling Kratos about how he made the axe he possesses, Atreus can be found petting the creature, um, strangely? His index finger appears to be double jointed. This continues throughout most of the scene. Furthermore, Atreus can be found glitching in front of the creature at one point, and even finds himself in its mouth. This is only one of the few strange things that takes place during this cutscene though. As we cross the bridge, Brock's pet caravan goes off screen and is never seen again during this cutscene. If we decide to follow it though, it begins walking funny, then it actually starts to levitate. It looks like a cartoon character that just caught the smell of something delicious. As it's doing this though, it then zips to its resting spot under the tent, making for an interesting scene. The last thing I found that was intriguing though, definitely involves Brock. So when Brock tells Kratos that there's a rune under the grip of his axe, he walks off screen as the cutscene progresses. If we decide to follow him off camera, we can see him reaching into what appears to be an invisible chest. As he's doing this, a branding iron can be found rising from underground, basically between Kratos and himself. Brock then starts walking back with what you would think would be the branding iron, but he is in fact holding nothing. When Brock approaches Kratos, the branding iron is floating between them, as it stands by for Brock to grab it. As he grabs it, it's at this point where we're supposed to see Brock as he re-enters the cutscene. So, judging by what we saw here, it makes me think at one point this cutscene was different. At no point in the normal cutscene can we see Brock actually rummaging through anything, which means any animation at all is pointless. So this makes me wonder if Brock originally had more screen time. Maybe he was actually rummaging through a chest and this animation is left over from that. It's definitely curious to think about. As we move forward though, we end up finding out what was in the trees and make quick work of them. It's shortly after this though that we encounter a spike trap puzzle that Kratos and Atreus must solve in order to open up a rune chest. It's definitely a lovely room of death. Bodies can be found in various locations of this dungeon, including one that's out of bounds. If we clip out of the area, we can find a body that is not visible through normal gameplay. Above the spike traps though, if you look closely, you can see in plain sight three skulls displaying hear no evil, see no evil, and speak no evil. It's sort of hard to see, but if you make the trap rise all the way up while standing on it, you can get a closer look at them, making for a cool easter egg. Did you happen to notice these skulls during your playthrough? Let me know down in the comments below. As we progress though, we make our way back outside, getting one step closer to the mountaintop. But that's going to be all with this quest. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you did, as I do plan on continuing this off-camera adventure. It will be curious to see what we come across next. But until then, later.